and motivation in, in and of itself is a scam. I don't believe in motivation. I believe in discipline. I am not motivated to do the things I'm supposed to do every day. I don't wake up full of like joy that I have to go to the gym or that I have to work or got to deal with crap. I don't feel motivated to do them. I'm disciplined. I do them regardless of how I feel. Whether I'm in the mood to do it or I'm not in the mood to do it, it gets done. That's discipline. Discipline's a real thing. Motivation is fleeting. Yeah. You're never going to be permanently motivated. I have found this to be true in my life as well. So while I'm not an expert, I do love listening to experts and taking their advice and applying it to my own life and then sharing the results with you guys. If that sounds interesting, please feel free to subscribe. Uh, this is the first step that I personally have found is very, very important. What's the first step in our viewers and listeners improving their discipline? Because they know they want it, they know they need it, but mm -hmm. You know, they haven't had the discipline of finding the discipline yet. Yep, identity. Yeah. Identity. Everyone who doesn't have discipline has created this false identity of themselves as, me. man, I'm just not a disciplined person. You know? Well, if you keep saying I'm not a disciplined person, you just keep going further away from discipline. Absolutely. You can, and that goes for everything in life, because I told myself the wrong things. And, right. Yeah. Holds right. That. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you know, gee, I'm, I'm not meant to be an entrepreneur. Well, keep saying that and, and <laughs> while trying to be an entrepreneur, and let's see how that turns out for you a decade right. from now. You're still going to be in the same spot. Mm -hmm. And so the, uh, what I found, especially I found this through the project. As, as we run the project, these men come to us, um, and, and all men carry some level of, most men, I shouldn't say all men, most men carry some form of a false identity. That false identity comes from a, like this shotgun blast that was delivered to their so one of the things that i well, let me just wait here one of the things that i do to apply this to my life is i will tell myself you know things that i want to be true about me before i feel like they are true about me so what bedros just said is you have an identity issue if you think that oh i can't well, I can't do this, or I am not that kind of person. So, for example, with sales, I always said that I am shy. I am an introvert. But then I accidentally wound up in a job where I had to do sales, and I could have either said, oh, I can't do that, and then gotten a different job. But instead, I told myself a different story. I said, no, I can learn how to do these things. And one of the things that really really works for me and and i did learn and i did learn how to do sales and i changed i grew as a person one of the things that really works for me is i like to envision a greater version of me being victorious over what i am currently struggling with whenever you're up against that wall you let's say you got in the car and you're sitting down and you're at the gym but you don't want to go in you, you just don't feel like going in it's 5 a.m you don't want to go in what, I, what, what often helps me with that is I like to imagine myself being jacked and greater and stronger than I am right now, having just done the thing that I am afraid to do, that I don't feel like doing. And that usually gets me pretty emotional and emotionally motivated to do that. And so while you can't rely on motivation, there are, you know, changing your identity is a pretty decent idea and way to give yourself a little bit of motivation to start being more disciplined. And now when we're in that unmotivated state, there's something very, very specific that I have learned to apply to my life. And I'm going to let Dr. Huberman share that with you guys now, because I feel like this is very, very important to, to get and indeed, right. That approach can work. And it's exactly what I'm describing here. When I say that you're in a state of, lack of motivation mm -hmm. or procrastination or both. And you need to put yourself into a more painful, not less painful state. So what do you do? You push up against that friction and you exercise for a short while. And then that pops you out of that trough. That's possible. But for a lot of people, even that won't be possible because they just can't get motivated. Or they do that one minute or five minutes and then they're just like, okay, I'm still in the trough. I'm not actually feeling that great. In those circumstances, it makes sense to do something that's tangential to the whole path that you're trying to pursue, this goal that you're trying to pursue, mm -hmm. that is, believe it or not, much worse than just being a motivated. And when I say worse, I don't mean picking some task that normally you don't like to do, but now you're willing to do. I mean, literally thinking about what would be worse than being in this state? Again, without causing yourself tissue or psychological damage. What would be mm -hmm. worse? Well, cold water would be worse for many people, very cold water. It does work. So the key is to figure out something that, for lack of a better way to put it, really sucks really sucks and yet is safe and by doing that you steepen the trough you steepen the slope of the trough which we know mm. brings you back 
to your baseline level of dopamine more quickly. Now, for some people that will be deliberate cold exposure through cold shower, ice bath. And I have to tell you that if you're cringing as I say this, well, then there you go. You now have a tool that you know you mm -hmm. cringe even when you just think about and therefore represents a great tool for you. So if I'm procrastinating to do something I really need to do, should I just simply wait for that procrastination to evaporate? No. Will it eventually evaporate? Maybe. Will a deadline eventually surface that will trigger me into an anxious or activated state that will allow me to complete what needs to be done? Maybe. Hopefully. But better would be to get out of that a motivated state, that state of procrastination, quickly. All right. So one of the things that I've done this and I've also done easier versions of it. I've done the cold shower thing and I've done the workout thing. And I do usually feel more motivated to do something boring like write a script or, you know, make a thumbnail for a YouTube video. So working out definitely does help. But I've also found that writing works really, really well as well. Because if I write down what it is that I'm trying to do and I narrow it down to the smallest task, that tiny task doesn't feel as difficult. And that's part of how I've been able to push through on, on things as well. As you, if you have like a whole list of stuff, it clogs your mind and you're trying to figure out where to go. And it can often feel like a cloud and just overwhelmed that you just end up doom scrolling YouTube for like 10 hours. Um, been there, done that. Don't believe me? Well, trust me, it happens. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to write down everything, write down the smallest thing. And another thing that actually works, surprisingly, is uh, staring at the wall. Um, I, I dare you to stare at the wall and do nothing for like 10 minutes. You probably won't make it. it it'll, it'll be so boring and so unstimulating that whatever it is that you are currently procrastinating on will feel more entertaining than that. And so... That's what I get from that. I hope you guys enjoyed that compilation of different advice in terms of, you know, motivation is not enough. You have an identity issue. We need to start seeing ourselves as the person that can do those things and then rise up to meet them. Um, even before we are those people, I find envisioning myself as who I want to be, even before I am that person, really does help get me motivated and to be disciplined. And when I'm not feeling motivated, what really helps is either staring at the wall, gym, cold shower, as Dr. Huberman said, but also um, just writing down everything that I want to do for the day and selecting the smallest task that leads me in that direction. Um, because then it's a lot simpler and easier to do. And that usually gets the ball rolling and then I actually get things done. Guys, if you got value out of this, the fact that you're watching this video is now right now is evidence that I actually have applied these things to my life and I'm actually figuring these things out because I've procrastinated on this YouTube channel for so long. So the fact that you're watching this video is evidence that I've actually taken these guys' advice and actually made it work. So if you want to follow me and follow along and make a journey with me, you can check out this video right here where I'm going to be doing a weekly vlogging series of my weekly progress on this journey to being the best version of me. Most disciplined, best in shape, healthiest, most clear-minded version of me possible. You can check out that video right here and I will see you guys next week.